Hey guys, it's Katie here from becomeagroupguru.com and I'm here with Renee Bond, art therapist. Welcome, Renee. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited you're here and I know everyone else is excited you're here. Thanks you for being patient with the tech glitches, you guys. I know it's been a process. <laughs> so we are super excited to hear about creativity, art therapy groups. Introduce yourself so people know who you are and what you do and what you're all about. Okay. Um, so I'm Renee Bond, as you said already. Um, I'm a psychotherapist, so LPCC in California. But then also I am an art therapist and I'm training to be a play therapist as well. So kind of this little blend of all three. Yeah. So who do you like to work with then as an art therapist, a psychotherapist, and now play therapist? Is it mostly children? Like what's your age demographic? So it's kind of evolving. Um, I, my practice is called Sacramento Child Therapy, so kids, but I've been kind of playing with the idea of like children ages six to 106. Like, we're oh. all, you know, children. I love that idea. I worked, well, in a partial program and sometimes helped out in an adult partial program. And their whole thing was like just connecting with the inner child in the adult. So yeah. when I went to work there, they're like, no, you don't do anything different than you do in your regular job at children and adolescent partial. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of beautiful when you can connect to that part of a, an adult. I would agree, giving them permission to connect to that piece of themselves, I think is so important. Totally. Yeah, so people six to 106, <laughs> play therapy, art therapy, psychotherapy, mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, that was a thing that I wrote. So tell us about, do you have an active group up and running right now? Mm -hmm. I have a couple. Um, you have a couple, so, okay. Yeah, so Thursday is kind of my group day, so that was kind of fun to have you today. Um, oh. So I have like a nine to 10 year old girls group and a nine to 10 year old boys group, and then I'm forming a like a 13 year old girls group in, in the works. Nice. Yeah. How, do you like the idea of separating them by gender? Is that something that you feel like has worked well? Do you have you ever thought co-ed? So, um, so last month was the first month of the the kids I'm working with right now, and yeah. they weren't separated by gender. But something I don't know it just seemed to work out to where I I split them for this month, and it just yeah. happened to be boys and girls, like not super intentional, but like the issues that that was that were presenting, it felt a little bit like like the safety was compromised a little bit by having the mixed gender. So I'm not like a stickler for it, but just in this particular group, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I can see value for all of the above. So I have co-ed groups and I have an all girls group. Um, and at one point we had a group that was almost all boys. So I think, it, you know, there's no right or wrong. It really depends on what each specific group needs. And it sounds like you've intuitively figured out what they need at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And tell us about what the structure of the group is. Are they open and ongoing? Are they like closed and curriculum based? What does it look like? So I'm still, that's still evolving too. But um, as of now, it's open and ongoing. And so I've been kind of playing with the idea of having different themes each month. Yeah. So this month's theme is social skills and last month's with anxiety. But it's like, that's just kind of like the umbrella and then really whatever's going on. Like we're, okay. we're focusing on that and it's support group. And then we, I always bring in the art and the play. Okay. So I have lots of questions about all of these things. And I know other people have questions too. Yeah. Um, if there is a theme, it, is it like art and psychoeducationally based? Or is it more like you're saying like support what they're coming in with and then you're giving them feedback and skills based on what they need or none of that? <laughs> well, like I said, it's evolving. So I, yeah. I like to meet them where they are. So I have like my plans, but my plans, who cares about my plans if everyone has like a rough week. So we yeah. start the group off with um, a meditation and we all ground ourselves and then check in, like, where is everybody? And if everyone's pretty solid, then I can like kind of roll out my plan. And if there's stuff going on, then I will adjust my plan. And then I, I kind of have like a, um, like an end thing that I want them to take away from it. So like whatever lesson I'm trying to like, or wisdom, I want them to just kind of get in their bones a little bit, kind of introduce that somewhere. I love, I love it. it. I think, oh, I oh, hear I Neko. Um, do you hear Neko? I don't. Okay, cool. Um, I think the theme across all of these interviews that I've been doing is flexibility. Is, you know, we have our plan or we have what they, we want them to learn, but also knowing that they're coming in with something and that it can pivot totally. when, once they're in the room. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
So, and I like the idea of you having something you want them to take away from it too. I feel like in some ways that's good customer service, like their kids. So they're going back to their parents and making sure they have like this one nugget of something they got from group is what parents want from the process. Well, and that's I, honestly like what I have in mind is like the parents because it's so abstract and so confidential and it's like, what are you guys doing in there? What are we paying for? So that is yeah. it. Agreed. I think that's a good part of the process. Mm -hmm. I'm so curious about play therapy groups. I know that's not specifically what it is, but you said you bring play therapy in. Is that like an activity or is it like I used to do child centered play. So I know a little bit about that process. What does it look like in your groups? Yeah. Um, so I feel like art therapy and play therapy are really, really closely related. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of it's interesting because I, I went through an art therapy uh, master's program. So like that's my my foundation, my like people, but then yeah. I got into like actual work and there's so much play therapy that needs to happen because not all kids are comfortable with art. So I kind of feel like play therapy is just underneath. I mean, art therapy is underneath play therapy, even though some okay. of my art therapy friends might not love that. Um, but that's kind of where I feel like they overlap so much that I just like to combine them. Um, so sometimes I have like a whole bunch of toys behind me. Um, so sometimes we'll just play with those and use metaphor. Sometimes they'll just do their own thing and like do like my, my room looks like a frat, frat party at the end of it. Um, and then so most of the time we're doing art. So I, I kind of consider the art also play. Absolutely. And then how do you structure it in terms of time? Because I know that with art, sometimes it takes more time than just talk alone. Like how long are your groups? Um, actually, since I been reading a lot of your stuff I so I used to do them an hour and a half but then this this last uh, session I've been doing an hour and it's actually been fine like I think that we'll take as much time as we can have and like certainly that's amazing to, ha to make the time but they're also so busy and they're so exhausted and just an hour seems pretty good I mean I think an hour works but I remember I ran like a tween um, art-based group a few years ago and we did collage in that first group I think that was the mistake <laughs> they were like we don't have enough time stop rushing us and that's when I started thinking I need to find activities that meet the time better because I've also found like in my summer camp I have an, a couple art therapists that work for me and an hour and a half was too much for some of them where they were just sitting there and every other people were still working so it's a hard balance it totally is and what I found um, last month we just have this one like project that we're doing and so every week just kind of work towards that project and they're just kind of like nudging some like I see your vision and that's fantastic but let's be realistic also and um, I don't know it seemed fine everyone finished their projects okay so it's not necessarily like they have to finish it at the end of group one. They can continue it into group two. That's what, yeah, what I've been playing with. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds really cool. Um, let's see what question. Favorite group activity that you guys do? What do you love? Um, so the one that I, like, answered your question with. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. It's, like, the best. <laughs> so you, and I guess just as a prep, like, a um a warning maybe like this could be yeah. super triggering so like kind of know know your people um mm -hmm. so what you do is you have a paper or a canvas and you're all you're all sitting around a table and mm -hmm. then um you don't really tell them you're kind of cryptic with the instructions and you just say like okay like go ahead and then you have the materials on the table already and so the kids start drawing or painting or whatever we're doing mm -hmm. and i'll set a timer and then the timer will go off and i'm like okay everyone stand up and they're like, oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm like, I know, but stand up anyway. And then we'll all move like to the right. And then it's like, oh shit. Like now I have <laughs> like my neighbor's thing. So it's this whole beautiful like boundaries and connection and like, what do I do? Um, and then you just say, okay, so go ahead and add on to this one. And then you keep going until you get back to your own. And then you look at it and like some people are stressed out. Some people are super excited. And then you can just add your final touches and then process. <laughs> I definitely need a process at the end of that one, right? Because I can imagine so many treatment goals that that's helping you work towards, but also the things that will come up for them as their masterpiece is being changed in ways that they didn't expect it to. Yep. yep. A little what bit are, of life. Exactly. <laughs> um, which leads into one of my other questions I have for you is how do you manage those perfectionistic teens and those very controlling, or not teens, but clients in your art therapy groups, the ones that are like, I'm not good at art, or I don't like the way this looks, or I can't draw, so they get very like shut down to the process. 
Oh my God. It's insane how many art scars are out there. Like yeah. that's kind of one of my like missions in life is to like help put some like soothing balm on art scars. Um, often I'll just say, let's just make a mess. Like, mm -hmm. or like give them a canvas. that's a little bit like funky or like all drip, like draw on a little bit. And I'm like, let's just make a mess. Let's just make shapes. Let's just make like lines, colors, like don't think about it as art and don't think about it as like, needing to it to look like something like let's just make a mess i like that again giving them permission to just like let it all out there and not have to be so controlled in the process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you ever heard of the book a beautiful oops yes i love <laughs> that book yes so it is a children's book for those of you who don't know it my son read it i think in like kindergarten or first grade at school which was great because it's just like all different pages of one is like a coffee spill and they make it into i forget what and one is like a rip in a page and they make it into an alligator and so just this idea of like you can turn something that is a mistake into something that's really beautiful. And it sounds like you do some of that in your in your groups. And I yeah. love that idea, yeah. especially the older like teenagers or older kids or adults, because adults are just like the worst. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I'm not an artist. I'm not. I'm not I'm like, I know, I know, but we're still going to do it. Right. And I think that's so important to let them have a different way of expressing what's happening for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a question for you. I think Bass asked a question. What's the best way for non-artistic therapists to incorporate crafts or art activities into a group? I think that's so important. I've heard that from several therapists. Like, I'm not creative. How do I do this? So what are your tips? Well, it's exactly what I just said. Like, give yourself permission to make a mess and do anything that you would ever bring into a group. Do it yourself and maybe do it yourself like a few times. Um, so the more comfortable you are with the materials and with your anxiety around art, the easier it will be for your clients to play as well. I think that's a really great tip, like not bringing something into the group that you haven't experienced for yourself in some way, mm -hmm. um, or at least practicing it in some way. And sometimes I will bring things into my group that like I have an idea of how they want, I want them to work. And I'll even say to them, like, this is the first time we're trying this. It could suck. It could go really wrong. <laughs> but let's be here together and see how this goes and be willing to play around with something. And they're like, okay, cool. Like they're fine with that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, again, like you can't mess it up as long as you're doing something, you can't really mess it up or like, let's mess it up or let's mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. But like, do you know what I mean? Like that's like permission to like, yeah. and nobody's messing it up. Like it's always awesome. But right. like when someone says to you, like make a mess, you go, Oh, very true. I love it. <laughs> what has been your biggest marketing strategy? Like, how do you fill your groups? Hmm. It, mostly referrals, like word of mouth. Um, a lot of people who I've seen for a long time individually will come back and kind of graduate to a group. Yeah. Um, I'm still like, I'm still going through your modules. So I'm still learning and like trying to, to hone it in, but also trying to balance, you know, being a mom of three and that whole thing. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> right, right. So a lot I, of referrals, like, go ahead. And the basic steps too. Okay. So, and it sounds like you get enough for at least you have, what, three groups running right now? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what would you say is like your favorite tip besides permission to give them makeup to make a mess, like in facilitating and leading, what would you tell someone who's an art therapist who's just starting out? Um, who is an art therapist? Yeah, we'll do I, both. Art therapist and then non-art therapist. Right, like it's a bit like a different mindset. Yeah. But um, I think have food. I think that's a good one. Because it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting when kids come in hungry. Like yeah. they're different kids. Um, mm -hmm. So I always have snacks and food. Try to just make them feel so nurtured, like nurtured with the food and then nurtured with the environment. So the art supplies is a source of nurturing as well. Um, so you want to like make sure it's like not just like disrespected and thrown in a pile. Like you want to make sure present it in a respectful way. Um, and probably time management, like as boring as that sounds, like sure. people get really stressed out when they're in the middle of something and they're like in this process and it's so beautiful. And then you're just like, okay, time's up. So kind of giving them the, the like transition times, like, okay, we have five minutes left. Okay. Like time to go now. Yeah. Okay. I like that. And then I'm wondering as you're talking, like, so I know from a DBT perspective that the more dysregulated someone is, the more structure that they need in terms of what they're coming into in an individual or a group session. But it also sounds like there's some anxiety 
there could be some anxiety for people like just draw whatever you want or just paint your feelings. You know, that sort of thing might feel really stressful for some people. For so sure. like what's the balance between directive art activities versus like not non-directive? I can't think of the word for that. <laughs> the idea is to like not be able to fail at something. So like you don't want to set them up with something like that's like this really awesome idea, but like if they can fail at it, like it's not exactly what the the point is, unless that's what you're trying to teach. But that's a whole nother yeah. thing. Like group session, you want everyone to be pretty safe and supported, and then that's how we also build rapport and trust with each other. Mm -hmm. So like collage is great, but maybe not just having a magazine of collage. Like maybe having pre-cut items and like having everything laid okay. out. Yeah. <laughs> and having the glue right there and just having everything ready to support the process. Like there's no mistakes here. We're just playing around. Okay. And then do you ever do like, how do, so like I know some therapists who do sand tray and do art, they do like very CBT style directive activities. Do you ever do things that are like draw this, now draw this and like teach a lesson from it? Yeah. I mean, sometimes. So I do, um, have you heard of Go Zen? I have heard of Gozen, but I don't know a lot about it if you want to explain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's an anxiety program for kids, and it's um, it's brilliant. It's CBT-based, and it's animated cartoons. Um, and so I like to do the whole family in a group. So I'll do, like, like three or four families together, and we're, we're all together for, like, six hours. And, oh, um, and so we'll, we'll eat, we'll um, watch some videos, and then we'll do art, and we'll watch more videos. And it's just really brilliant. Um, the videos or the art supports the videos, and we're just learning about our brain and how anxiety shows up and how we can ease it. That sounds really cool, almost like a family hangout day. It's so, it's so like fun. Like you'd be amazed how much fun. Yeah. <laughs> With some CBD. <laughs> Lynn says her anxious kids won't eat your snacks. Lynn, you have a lot of anxious kids. I know mine. I have a giant chocolate bowl in the middle of my group <laughs> circle, and it's like emptied by the end of groups. So. Oh yeah, I'm like at Costco all the time. Yeah, I think it's one of my biggest expenses aside from like rent is chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any other questions for Renee before I do my wrap up questions? Because I think we flew through the information that I wanted to get from you. Let me check my notes and make sure I have nothing else. But Lynn, I know you're here. There are other people here. Who's here? Give me your questions. <laughs> Jenny, Bonnie, Lynn, give us your questions. Ask away. Um, yeah, we answered all my questions. Yeah. So, okay, if you had to run any art therapy group with any population and you knew it was going to fill no matter what, like what would be your dream art therapy group to run? Ooh, good question. You know, um, so I've run, run the group before, but it was all facilitated through a functional restoration program. Um, so if I knew that it was going to fill, I would do a chronic pain group. Oh. Amazing results with chronic yeah. pain population. Love it. So, okay, so something completely different than the nine and 10-year-olds and the teens. Uh -huh. But like, it's amazing the stuck things that happen with people who are in chronic pain and that inner child that we were talking about earlier. And like yeah. the the abuse that they've gone through their whole lives. And then yeah. usually it's like the adult abusing their own inner child and yeah. So much there, yeah. yeah. That'd be pretty sweet. And then tell us a little bit about like the tools or materials that you typically use. Is it like drawing, paint, collage? Like what's the norm in your groups? All of the above. That's not a thing. <laughs> it's not, a, there's no norm. <laughs> like an entire, entire storage closet just full of amazing stuff and a lot of it's garbage like we just keep collecting um recycled materials and paints and I mean I'm at the dollar store all the time they would get like new stuff and Hobby Lobby and Blick and yeah that's kind of like the hoarder in me like <laughs> art supplies so there's no one or two like go-to's it changes up depending on the week no, and I mean, I went um, before my anxiety group with my children, and we just went to the park and collected sticks because our whole project was going to be about sticks and, like, wrapping the sticks. So, like, literally anything. That sounds really cool. Yeah. And I know when I did child-centered play therapy, like, one of the things that I was taught was that we don't typically let them take their art with them because then sometimes it becomes about, like, creating something for someone else and takes the focus off of them and what they need in the session. 
But what do you do with, like, do they take the art with them when they complete the project? Is it week to week they take things home? Um, I leave it up to the kid unless it's like really like obviously really like sensitive and I don't want anyone else to see it. Like I'm protecting yeah. them um, from themselves. But otherwise, like I think it's up to them. Like, what do you want yeah. to do? With and sometimes it's like, burn it. Let's burn that. Like, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other times, no, oh, I'm taking it home. I love this. And other times I just keep it. So it's kind of fluid. Yeah, I think I do that now with my teens. Most times I'm like, you guys can take your stuff home with you. And then they all just throw it out on their way out. <laughs> Unless it's cool, like marble jars or glitter jars, things like that they'll take. But like their drawings and stuff they do, they're like, whatever, we'll just leave this. Mm -hmm. So it does depend for sure. Yeah. Um, give us your final thought. Give us like your favorite thing about art therapy groups or, you know, anything that you want us to know, what you know for sure. What do I know for sure? Well, I know that art heals. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have your own art scars, like maybe work on those and then mm -hmm. like when you feel a little bit confident, um, bring it because I think that we all need more art for sure. I love that term art scars. Is that like your way of saying someone who's timid or hesitating to go into using art because of a past mm -hmm. criticism? Yeah. So typically by like teenage years, we have art scars to where, so like as we're we're little elementary, like beautiful imaginations. And we're just like going with the flow and like anything we create is awesome. And everyone's like, Oh my God, that's so awesome. Um, but then by the time the like, teenage years hit there, we're judging it, we're grading it yeah. and we're being told like, you're not a good artist. Like maybe go do something else. And then we hold on to those and it's like really, really, really damaging. Um, mm -hmm. Brene Brown talks a lot about it too. She has research on it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's yeah. I think that's pretty valid and pretty true that people go through that experience. I remember when I went to my son's school for like his kindergarten or first grade, like back to school night and the principal was like, said something similar that like when, when kids are younger, they consider themselves artists and musicians. And then he was like, how many of you in this room still consider yourself an artist and a musician? And I think I was like one of two people that raised their hand, like someone else that was a graphic designer and me who's just like a creative person. And I was like, wait, what? Like, that right. nobody just allows themselves to be. Bonnie says, I absolutely had art scars and helped my clients with drawing on the right side of the brain. Oh, neat. That uh -huh. sounds cool. Yeah. Um, I know my art therapist does this like draw with your opposite hand thing, like mm -hmm. not your dominant hand. So that sounds cool too. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's also like crossing the bilateral for trauma, mm -hmm. like sort of EMDR-ish. That Pretty sounds cool. cool too. A lot of techniques, I'm sure, that you as an art therapist, I'm not uh -huh. even aware of. <laughs> And then I know that there, I talked to another art therapist who said something about like, you know, people who do expressive arts and therapy, I think it was Jodi, um, I can't, her last name is slipping my mind right now, but people who are not art therapists don't have a sense of like what modalities are really make sense for certain populations and present presenting concerns. Mm -hmm. Like we just do some art in sessions, but you guys are so well trained on like, this is really a match for what it is that somebody's experiencing. And I think that's so interesting. Well, yeah, and like a lot of materials are, can be regressive or like really safe. So like kind of, you know, water watercolors is like a pretty like, you don't want to go there first. Mm -hmm. Like some colored pencils, some markers, like really safe things, contained things. Contained, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Maybe so yeah. say it again. I said there's so much, yeah. Like so much. You can't give us a graduate degree right here. <laughs> <laughs> but you did give us some great ideas. Most of what I took from this is just like the permission to mess it up. And I think I might even use that in my groups of like, here's a piece of paper, make a mess. Let's figure out how we can make this not perfect and give ourselves permission mm -hmm. to just put it all out there. So thank you for that. A huge paper and like the whole group makes a mess together on one paper. Like that's pretty cool. That I love that too. And that's a very connecting activity. Right, right. Love it. So thank you for those of you who are here. And thank you to you, Renee, for being here. Um, yeah. For anyone who's interested, the 6CE e course is available until October 20th. It's on sale now. And then we will wrap it up and it will go away because it will expire. So <laughs> if that sounds like something you're interested in to get a bunch of group activities, some of them are expressive arts activities. Some of them are just talk and discussion related. I would love for you to check it out. Um, Renee, please stay in touch and let us know how your groups are going. And I'll be waiting to hear about your chronic pain group that I know is going to pop up at some point for you. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. We'll talk soon. Bye.